Okay, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to utilize the uh, Paran package uh, to carry out uh, parallel analysis. Uh, this package is a user-written package for uh, Stata and um, basically a discussion of that package, you can see it appearing in, this, in the Stata journal uh, from 2009, volume 9, number 2, pages 291 to 298. So uh, what I'm going to do in this particular video is just demonstrate uh, how to install and, and to uh, utilize some of the functions associated with this. Um, so basically the data set uh, you can see right here I've already imported data uh, basically represents individuals responses to a set of items from the international personality item pool and more specifically uh, they come from uh, several subscales from the cat personality disorder scales. Uh, the subscales the items include affective lability, anger, uh, anxiousness, uh, depressiveness, grandiosity, and health anxiety. So uh, what we'll do is just kind of walk through several um, things here. So uh, first off, let's uh, uh, to uh, actually obtain the package and install it, what we're going to do is just go to uh, the, our command line, type in search, and then P-A-R-A-N, and hit enter. And um, you can see that this is what comes up. Notice that the first uh, link right here uh, looks like there's something, uh, there's an error with it. So we're going to go to the second one right here and you get a description of the uh, module or package. Um, and then we're going to go down to click here to install and I would already installed it so this is just kind of saying hey it's already uh, been taken care of. Uh, the help file is down here and so you can see that you um, have a description of all the different uh, options associated with this package. Um, obviously if you um, need help later on you can just type in help P-A-R-A-N and hit enter and there you go. So um, now let's start off with um, demonstrating the use of parallel analysis and what I'm going to do is actually just use uh, this syntax right here for starters. So what I'll do is I'm just going to type in uh, in the command line P-A-R-A-N uh, and then I'm going to type in Q1 to Q49 and you'll notice over here uh, basically the Q1 to Q49 uh, that saves me the hassle of just typing in Q1, Q2, Q3 all the way up to Q49. Uh, note that there's actually just 39 variables in the data set. Um, they increment by one in terms of the variable names all the way up to 29 and then it jumps to 40 to 49. So that's why I'm just typing in a range uh, from Q1 to Q49. Then we'll type in comma, and then you can see um, uh, I'm going to type in iter you know uh, I T E R for iterations 100. Um, this is essentially referring to the number of um, random correlation matrices uh, to generate uh, for the analysis. So um, I could have this at 100 or 500. Um, you know it just depends on your you know your preference and, and what you, what do you what you want to do. Uh, next I'm going to type in quietly. And this suppresses a lot of the um, factor analytic uh, output that we don't really want uh, in this particular demonstration. And then graph, and then all. And by clicking on all, or typing in all, essentially what it's going to do is give me all of the eigenvalues uh, from the component solution, not just a subset. So I'll show you the difference shortly. Note, too, that um, if I leave the syntax in this kind of way right here, what it's going to do is it's going to compute the average uh, of the randomly generated eigenvalues across the 100 um, correlation matrices. So uh, each eigenvalue uh, is essentially going to be uh, averaged across the 100 correlation matrices and that's what's uh, ultimately going to be compared against our observed data. So now I'm going to hit enter and uh, there you go. So you'll notice uh, in terms of the output over here, it says using the mean estimate. So essentially, uh, you know, kind of uh, thinking about what this means, this means that uh, we're essentially generating simulated data uh, with uncorrelated variables. So you could say, you know, this is, you know, kind of a simulated sample one, sample two, all the way to uh, sample 100. So each of those samples would have uh, a correlation matrix. And then out of those correlation matrices uh, are, then you would essentially generate, um, uh, you know, essentially uh, 39 eigenvalues because that's the number of measured variables. So there would be 39 eigenvalues, and then those eigenvalues are averaged across 
um, to produce uh, sort of a, a, an overall estimate of the uh, or a random eigenvalue, if you will. So at any rate, looking at uh, the table right here, you'll notice the unadjusted eigenvalue. This is computed directly from your data. And then, based on the simulation, uh, there's an adjustment to those eigenvalues for uh, possible bias. And uh, you see there's like a little bias estimate over here. And then, um, you know, using uh, essentially um, um, uh, the eigenvalue cutoff rule applied to the adjusted eigenvalues, you can see that uh, based on that, uh, we would be uh, retaining essentially uh, five factors um, because essentially the idea is that what you're looking for are eigenvalues that are greater than one. So it's basically the Kaiser criterion applied to um, our, um, our, uh, uh, our adjusted eigenvalues. Um, so you can notice down here it says criterion retain adjusted components with eigenvalues greater than one. So these are the adjusted components with those eigenvalues greater than one. The remaining um, eigenvalues uh, are all falling below one, and so these, you know, so that would suggest the presence of a five-component solution or the need to adopt a, a five-component solution. Um, note too that uh, you you just saw it, but basically when I hit more, this um, came up. You can, I kind of had to kind of spread it out a little bit and, and make it larger to see everything. But uh, essentially, what you have is a plot of the observed eigenvalues against the number of components. Then you also have a plot of the adjusted eigenvalues, and then the randomly generated eigenvalues. So you can see right here, uh, you know, this is the um, uh, observed eigenvalue. Uh, this is the um, adjusted eigenvalue for component one. So, the, so you can see there's a little bit of a difference there, uh, where you have that adjustment for bias. Then this is for uh, component two, and then for component uh, three and, and onward. So notice uh, also that uh, as you're looking at it, you can see the observed, the, the dashed line uh, um, uh, is referring to the observed uh, eigenvalues. Uh, the, uh, the straight line without any dashes is, is uh, for, the for the adjusted eigenvalues. And then you can see the dotted line is capturing the randomly generated eigenvalues. So you can see that the observed and adjusted eigenvalues really correspond um, uh, uh, you know, pretty closely in many uh, instances. So, you know, looking at this particular um, um, graph right here, you can see, you know, here are the randomly generated eigenvalues. And you can see that um, we're going to compare those against the observed eigenvalues. So you can see, again, it's a little uh, hard to see, but you can see the dashed lines. And so essentially the, the basic idea is you would retain uh, those components with observed eigenvalues that are as long as they are exceeding those that are generated at random. So you can see right here for component one, uh, it's clearly above component two, component three, four, and five right here. Um, you know uh, the observed eigenvalues all the way up to this point um, are exceeding those that are generated at random. But then you can uh, see uh, that when we move into uh, component six that um, our observed uh, and um, random eigenvalues, basically the observed eigenvalues actually start to fall below those that are generated at random. So at this point, this is where we would um, essentially make the cut. So essentially from this point onward, uh, we essentially are going to cut and we would adopt then the five component solution. Another way of looking at it too, because it's gonna correspond with those adjusted eigenvalues uh, at the point at which uh, our adjusted eigenvalue uh, falls below one, which you can see is represented by um, the little uh, open circles. Uh, at that point, you would make the cut as well, and that's what's represented uh, in uh, the table that we just saw. So that's um, you know, so that's this point right here where the adjusted eigenvalue falls to 0.96. Okay, so let's look at it again. In this in this case, uh, let's see what happens if we don't include uh, uh, the uh, all statement. So I'm just going to actually uh, copy and paste that in without all and hit it. And so you can see in this particular case, we still end up with the same graph, uh, but now you can see um, in this particular case there was another simulation. And in this particular case, it actually suggests uh, a six-component solution. You have to keep in mind that um, you know. 
we're, we're simulating, and so you can have still some sampling error across uh, those simulations. And so, um, in this case, the uh, observed, uh, the adjusted eigenvalue we, uh, actually suggested a six point uh, or a six component solution. So you do have to keep in mind that you know when you're uh, going through and looking at uh, these options, I think there's a seed uh, option in here where you can re you know basically reproduce, yeah, right here, seed number, uh, so that you can reproduce the previous um, uh, analysis um, using uh, that particular seed number. So at any rate, uh, there you go. So this this is what you get instead of all of this right here. Uh, now, uh, let's see that we want the ninety fifth percentile instead of the using the mean of the eigenvalues. So essentially what we can do is uh, include uh, the statement centile and inside the parenthesis 95. So I'm going to use that and I'm also going to do away with the uh, all statement because uh, we already know what that's going to do for us. So in this case I'm just going to copy and paste this in and uh, there you go. So in this particular case you can see uh, in our output uh, that now it says using the uh, 95th percentile estimate for the randomly generated eigenvalues. And so in this case, it's actually suggesting um, a five component solution. You have to keep in mind that this is actually a more conservative estimate for um, when it comes to the number of factors, or excuse me, factors or components to retain than using the mean option. So. Um, so in this particular case, you know, you, you, you do still see that, uh, you know, where it says retain components, adjusted components less uh, that are greater than one, you see it dropping below um, um, one uh, at uh, component six and seven, and then uh, theoretically onward down. Okay, so that is uh, a brief demonstration using principal components analysis. Let's say we want to use princ uh, iterated principal axis factor analysis. So in this case, um, I've still got the first part exactly the same, followed by the comma. Then I have factor, and then inside the parenthesis, IPF for iterated principal uh, factors. And then I'm also just going to stick with the quietly graph options there. And uh, I'm just going to copy and paste this in. Hit enter. And so it takes a, a little bit longer to, uh, to go through and compute than uh, what we had before with the uh, principal uh, components analysis. So you can see down here it says computing, it's kind of walking us through. So it takes a, a, a few seconds to actually uh, accomplish this. So um, at any rate, we're just going to still wait um, and uh, see what happens here. And, uh, you know, again, just kind of uh, reiterating that uh, this is a really good article that kind of goes into a number of uh, details with respect to um, using parallel analysis. Keep in mind that when we're dealing with uh, principal uh, components analysis, uh, when we are comparing using the uh, adjusted eigenvalues, what we're going to be doing is, um, again, retaining those um, those um, adjusted eigenvalues, those, uh, the, those components with adjusted eigenvalue that's greater than one. Uh, but you'll also see, uh, in, as you're reading through the article, there's a discussion about that uh, when you're dealing with uh, factor analysis to retain those eigenvalues that are greater than zero. So just kind of keep that in mind. So here uh, the analysis has been run. It's also using the mean estimate in this case rather than the 95th percentile. So um, in this case, I'll click on more. And so there we go. We have the same sort of deal um, as before in terms of how it's presented, observed, adjusted, and random eigenvalues. And in this particular case, you'll notice the criterion has changed. As I said, when you read that art article, you'll you'll see uh, that some discussion on this. Uh, it says retain adjusted factors that are greater than zero. So the adjusted eigenvalues, none of them are actually uh, less than zero. So, uh, and that would actually suggest then retaining all 39 components, which is um, pretty um, unusable. Um, also, if we look at the um, uh, graph right here, you'll notice that uh, none of the um, uh, adjusted eigenvalues, none of them have circles, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, circles that are not filled in, uh, which is again telling us that all of these are um, essentially. Uh, meeting the retention criteria. Uh, you'll notice too that when we have the uh, dashed line uh, right here uh, plotted against the random eigenvalues right here, you'll notice that 
uh, none of the randomly generated eigenvalues uh, uh, fall, uh, you know, end up exceeding the observed eigenvalues. So essentially, that's suggesting then retaining uh, a 39 uh, factor solution, which uh, makes no sense. And so, and that's one of the the the, the possible downsides uh, that I've seen when it comes to uh, you know using uh, parallel analysis with uh, the actual factor uh, analysis solution is that you can end up with this kind of problem. So another way around this uh, problem is just to um, you know, decide on the number of factors based on a principal components um, analysis. So essentially kind of going back and using what we had done before um, in order to identify um, a possible number of factors that explain the correlations among the measured variables. So, uh, and going with that, uh, you know, we would adopt probably a five-factor uh, solution uh, moving forward. So uh, that pretty well concludes this uh, demonstration. There are other, you know, uh, aspects associated with uh, the program. Like I said, there are various uh, other technical details that you can uh, read about in the article or going into the uh, uh, help option in, um, in uh, Stata.